All right, we're live. <clears throat> yeah, so music's probably pretty loud. I've got it cranked right now. This is the new track from Robert. Okay, now we're live. Cool. Uh, I was looking at the stream bot. It didn't seem to... It didn't seem to be live or whatever. Whatever, whatever. First time being early to the stream, Ram B says, uh, it's because the stream's so late. It's 9.40 p.m. my time. It's like an hour and 40 minutes past when I usually stream. What's up, Rev Chumley, Quixana, Manu, my dearest Ali, Justin Beard. What's going on, buddy? Justin Beard, I'm glad you're here because <clears throat> I'm, I'm probably not going to stream tomorrow. And I would feel bad if you weren't here today and you're waiting on the stream tomorrow. So I'm glad you were the only person I was thinking of. Like, man, I hope. I hope this dude shows up. Big announcement, that's a good way to get people in. Is that why you're here, Weapon? What's up, Cacao? Drew ATX? Yeah, we're just, um, Nick had to step out for a little, little, uh, something. And he's going to be back. He's going to be back in a little bit. When he gets back, then we will formalize. We will formalize the uh, the announcement. What's up, Lich? You're going to love this one. I'm glad you're here for this one. We're gonna we're gonna talk in a little bit once we get some information presented to you guys. Then we can get your opinion. You all want a new car? Well, I cannot I cannot confirm or deny that until until Nick's back and then we can shoot out the notifications and stuff. I'm over here. I've got so much shit open on my lap uh, laptop on my computer right now and I'm trying to like find a way to organize everything. <clears throat> What's up, Reckless Abandon? So... Lich... Let's see... <clears throat> Sorry, I'm still organizing shit. Um... Go down to here. What'd you do now? Nothing yet. You may you may do something later. We're gonna make an announcement and you may not be happy with it. And that's okay. Cause we can't make everybody happy. Game was sold. <laughs> That'd be something, right? We've already sold the company. <laughs> that, would be, that would be hilarious. Holy shit. Ah, oh, man, that would be something. Everybody thought we were talking about early... Everybody... Thought we were talking about early access announcement and we've been bought by EA. <laughs> and none of us are sticking around. We're taking money and going. Uh, 
Just kidding. In case there's any sort of like legal issues I could face for making a joke like that. Talat, what's going on? Defiant says Eminem is a mobile game. I can neither confirm nor deny that's what's happening. Um, Dozakar. Nick's back? Where's Nick? Nick's not back. I don't see Nick. Uh, let me check my various windows. Is Nick back? Nick's not back. Oh, is he in Discord? That was going to be in the next window. Oh, Nick's posted news. Cool. So, our update is out. Now that Nick has posted it, I can officially confirm. He's frantically getting the news out. Awesome. Bitcoin will be used for the subscription payment method. Man, that shouldn't even be controversial. Leave it, leave it to the internet to make that controversial. <clears throat> Oh my god, those guys are taking Bitcoin for their subscription. Why are they killing the forests? Oh no. Blockchain game confirmed. Oh, Turbo Path. A lot of new faces in here, all calling it right. We are we have officially sold the company to make a mobile blockchain game that you can only pay for with Bitcoin. When are you gonna reveal your favorite chili recipe? I really don't have a very good chili recipe. Can I throw money at y'all besides Twitch? Not yet, boss. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. And for those of you watching the VOD, um... I promise it'll probably be a little bit more exciting in a minute or two, or a little bit later. Cool. All right, so you guys, um, let me bring up a window that's got it. I mean, I've got so And let me pull it over here when it's the actual window, not the act, not the... All right, so we've updated. I've got the music up really loud in my ear. It's the new. Guys, have you heard the new song from Robert? It's included in this update. Uh, so let me know if it's too loud. So I'll let you guys read through at your leisure. It is in the updates area. It looks like this. Um, when you click on it, it then, um, this top part is the part that I think will be interesting to a lot of people. It is a, it's a very solid, very beefy update again. Um, the, uh, but the part that we'll be curious to see folks reaction to um is right here if you look at the top there's the word play right here in the uh first little section there's the word play and when you click on the word play it takes you to a new section on the website so um this page and the linked pages are new Never before seen uh, information. Um, in the first sentence should help sort of kick off the theme, right? So we are 
posting information related to um, our launch date for early access. Um, and as part of that, because there will naturally be questions like, what does that entail? Um, I, well, she was about to say there's a whole list of questions in the FAQ, right? So that gets to this next part right here. Click here. Um, Nick's done a superb job of pulling all these together, writing these up, pulling them together. So here's a breakdown of what you should expect um, with regards to early access. Why are we deciding to go into early access um, in the time frame that we've given here? We've stated here, Monsters and Memories will enter early access in January 2026. Um, oops, go forward. Uh, and we explain why in detail. So um, some of the questions that you guys came up with um, or kind of hit us with when we first started talking about it a few weeks ago. I'm just kind of floating it a little bit. Uh, we've been talking about this for a while now. This is, this was, uh, we had a big meeting, uh, which it's really cool to see like the Slack huddle from that meeting. Cause it's like almost everybody's, everybody's uh, icons from Slack. We had like 20 of us in there and went through um, only 1080p available in video settings for some reason. Oh, really? Oh, you, hmm. You know what I did? Shit. Should I restart? I think I was recording something during the week and, uh, and wanted to not like have a big ass image. Oh, is it because I'm no longer affiliate? I thought it, I thought I changed something when I was recording my Hamad sessions. Ah, uh, okay. I'm just. Uh, it's only if it's available. Oh, okay. Cool. All right. Then we don't have to restart because it's not going to fix anything. All right. <sighs> Damn it! First, you ruined my flow. I was on a. I was on a roll. If you're watching the VOD. You can, uh, I was about to say you could just fast forward, but you're already here. That makes no sense. Couple King, welcome. DTX Waldo, how's the pinky? It is gone. It's gone. It's gone. So my brain doesn't realize it's gone, but it is gone. So that's that. We'll talk about that more at a later date. We've got more important news than missing digits. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, oh, fuck, where was I? Um, we'll do this all again and maybe that will make that the official announcement video. We'll do this again. Oh, maybe not next week. I have surgery on Tuesday. Anyways. All right. So let's just pretend like we've got our shit together and this is one smooth, continuous flow of information because this is a big deal for us. Um, we had a big meeting. We talked about uh, timelines. Um, we were basically from that point forward, uh, this has been a bit now, mapping things out, sort of breaking out milestones, looking at um, world map, looking at what we think is feasible to get done in a amount of time that we feel is re reasonable for us to go before like just wanting to kind of get live and get going so anyways if you go through the early access faq that you can reach from hitting play and uh either clicking on one of these links or scrolling through here we've got we've got multiple sections one that's focused on the early access faq part of things um Oh, this is actually a reminder that the accounts page is not missing. It's here. Um, the early access FAQ page uh, link here. Um, and then we've got some extra information that we wanted to provide you guys um, for uh, just to help you understand every detail that we could possibly help you understand about the project, both its history and what we want to do moving forward. Um, so yeah, we've got 
our development roadmaps in the past, we um, we just sent you to this guy right here. This was kind of our roadmap, but it's really just a big deconstruction. And we would we uh, would mention, you know, like keep it pretty up to date. It's not always super, super up to date. I mean, it's been done fairly recently, um, but we've got. I just realized now I've been working, uh, editing the web page so much that my screens that it was at like 50% or 60%. Um, anyways, if you're not familiar with the Trello board, we're going to keep updating this. This is a handy sort of overview of what we're doing. Um, if you're not familiar with Trello, you can click on the little color things here. It'll give you some information there. Um, I think this is how it works on your end as well. And it's just an overview of the game. Um, <clears throat> Now, what we've added is a very high level roadmap. We'll be updating these, so expect these to change um, at random frequency, depending on when we decide that we've got either a better way to present the info or different info we want to present. But this should let you know, 2024 through Q2 of 2025, we're gonna continue to work through proof of concept. Um, now, it's gonna go on a bit longer than that, but other things will be ramping up as that's going on. Q2 of 2025, we're also basically going to switch on the art side to developing some zones that will be zones and other content that will be available right after we go live. So that's when we uh, begin the development of our first module, our first content update, um, keeping it old school with the module theme that will be Descent into the Deep. Um, and so we'll be working on the Deep Elf City and some Deep Zones. Um, which are all part of the region uh, that we're working in at launch. Um, Q3, we're really just going to be hammering on polish and a lot of testing. Um, and so you guys will probably be participating in that. And then um, Q4 of 2025, we're basically going to be getting the, hopefully getting the first update Um polished up and ready to go so that we can have it ready when things stabilize after we go live and then q1 2026 will be going into early access um doza car said to be serious just once is super exciting i'm very happy to see roadmap um we're super excited as well don't let however i'm presenting it or or fucking whatever um not convey that uh um i'm i'm definitely i'm extremely excited um let's see rev chumley said all the info love it um lich said yeah i went through most of it really quickly but i ain't got uh too many complaints okay i was curious because you definitely had a lot of uh opinions about early access and stuff but like i said we've we've tried to um We've tried to really break down what we mean by early access and, and tackle most of the concerns or whatever. Um, I hope that's more of a trailer roadmap, not a sprint. Oh, no, 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 that's, uh, that's everything. That's pretty much everything that's uh, going into the game is there. Uh, solo self found mode. Dan, are you asking what it is or are you asking if it's in? Um, it's already in. Uh, but if you're asking what it is, we can explain that. Um, what is it? It is a game mode in which you are dependent on yourself. You, you can't uh, depend on other players. And we may, if we don't have a like a SSF uh, breakdown in like our FAQ or whatever for folks that aren't familiar, we should probably add that as well. Um, but essentially, it, it means that you're you're self reliant through. Uh, through the playthrough so you're not trading with other players and, and things like that i'm doing a kind of a very abridged uh, explanation on it but um, folks will be happy to talk to you in detail about it on discord uh, reckless abandon you are welcome uh, let's see oh and uh just to kind of wrap up this flow really quick so we've got this here we've still got the links to the trello board which we're going to continue to maintain we post our updates, which is how we kick this off, right? So always keep an eye on them. Like I said, updates are really, really 
beefy for the most part. You're going to see a lot of cool concept art and stuff that hasn't made it made it to its uh, to our media section yet. Um, and you know, always check those out. Anyways, so now we've got defel development phases broken down. As we're using a terminology, this should help you kind of keep track of what we're meaning as we're working through stuff. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Okay. We have a new page that is development history. This one's pretty interesting to us, right? Uh, so one of the things that we wanted to do is not only talk about what we're planning on doing in the future, but kind of break down and re-describe to you, especially if you haven't been following this, you know, this uh, development process since the very beginning, back when it was just, you know, a couple of us, three of us, four of us, and just kind of goofing around and stuff that first year. Um, what we try to do is just break down what what the process looked like. Um, we've got a list of the current team members who joined during each period. So you can kind of see who is coming onto the team then. So you can kind of get a feel for the, the tenure of the people on the team and the scale of the team. Um, we've had other people be on the team and then no longer be on the team during that. Uh, haven't had necessarily a very high churn rate, um, but we've had people come and go. Could not find a format where that was not just going to be a fucking mess. Um, so we've got the format that we have. Uh, if you're one of the people that have been on the team in the past and aren't on the team now, this is no slight to you. You'd be in the credits, uh, but this was the easiest way for us to format this. But you can kind of see the big beats that we, there is no announcement command Elrond. We barely, dude, it's it's 10 p.m. my time. I'm just starting the stream. We're lucky the website's up. <laughs> we're, we're coming in hot on this one. But we really wanted to get it out this week. Um, and that way we have time to talk about it over the weekend and be excited and um, all that. And then should, if there's like any sort of freak out or something need to be fixed or whatever, then I, I felt more comfortable if we could get it all out this weekend as well because I've got surgery on uh, Tuesday. It's nothing major, just some shoulder surgery. And uh, uh, so I wasn't sure if I was going to be at my desk or not. So, um, so yeah, you can look and go, oh, this is what came online in 2020. Initial streams discussing like the project. We started in pre-production in July. We formed a team. Really, we came together in August. We had the first playable build in September. Um, you know, started doing the live streams consistently for the project. And then, um, yeah, and then it just kind of ramps up and you can see, this is where we, look here, 2021, that's where we finally got our own artists. And that's where you see like Harrison or Pattis and Zukin and Goblin come on board, stuff like that, right? And so you can see these guys have been busting their ass for years now, right? Uh, which is an important part of the next page. But here, uh, just to wrap this up, you can also look at uh, like the systems and stuff that have been coming on online year after year. So, yeah. Um, and then if we go back, um, This is the last page. Uh, we've also provided you a breakdown of what we've what we've spent on the project so far, um, and this gets into. Let your question is: I'd be curious to know what the expected timeline between early access and live 1.0 is. Um, I will say that this page actually has a lot to do with the answer to that. It is variable. It is variable. We can work through and do maybe a rough estimate of at our current pace, if nothing changes, this is how long we think it would take to get to where we want to be in 1.0. Um, but I would also say that there are probably some realities that we'd have to face if nothing changes with our current pace between early access and us trying to get to 1.0. You see what I'm saying? Because if nothing changes, which means we've got no extra money, it's all coming out of our pocket, 
and everybody's still working part-time as a passion project. We'll have to see. Um, there, we'll be having some discussions for sure. On the flip side, if we're doing well, then we've got a few hundred of you, a few thousand of you, anything more than that, it will give us the opportunity to take some different approaches to increasing our velocity, right? Um, when people ask like, hey, you know, especially the people that aren't familiar with the project, they're like, oh, why do these guys think they can, you know, go live with an MMO and then uh, if it's small, then are they doomed, all that shit. Um, we just wanna, we wanna get started because we can start pretty fucking small and still be successful because right now it's all just coming out of our pocket and we're volunteering our time. That's what this first paragraph is. But we will show you, that's what we, we say later down as we go. When the money starts coming in, we're gonna provide the same sort of pie chart to show you this is what money's coming in. Um, this is where it's coming in from. Is it coming in from subscriptions? Is it coming in from the merch shop? Is it coming in from the tip jar, whatever, right? Um, we'll show you how we're allocating our cash um, and uh, the decisions we're making with regards to um, ramping up the team, um, paying back the team for their time, uh, putting stuff away, right? So uh, there's a full breakdown on our approach here um, as you get, so post-launch plan, get into there, but we're gonna be transparent with you just like we are transparent here. And here you can look at what we've spent so far. Um, Reckless Bandit said, not gonna lie, I never expected this level of transparency. I appreciate you saying that, and I'm not gonna lie, I don't know that many people um, are willing to go to this level of transparency. Um, this is on the level of too much information. It might be, I don't know, it might be too much. Uh, there may be some good reasons for not doing this. I can't think of any at the moment. Um, I'm sure if there's like a really, really bad reason for not doing this, We'll find out and then we'll just have to deal with it. Um, but for the most part, you'll see um, this breakdown, um, you know, allocation of uh, cash so far. The biggest one, uh, it goes back to your um, your question of like, how long is it going to take to make the rest of the game? Uh, this is the, the green sections all related to um, essentially making content right uh the contractors that we paid for its initial concept art, early character our outsourcing environment uh texture exploration and then ongoing contract work uh with a big chunk of that you know being in the early days it's the same thing with legal a big chunk of our legal is like getting the company established working through the trademark um you know having legal questions all of that stuff so the let's see the where was i the thought here is if we're if we're super transparent with you with regards to what it's taken to get here so far and we can show you also um what we did in this time frame then you can maybe make a, a mental image of like what are these guys capable of going forward um are we gonna be able to maintain a similar velocity in terms of getting features online, getting content going? Um, you know, we're showing you stability in our in our team for now. I mean, the, these guys could all quit tomorrow. That'd be kind of weird, but uh, then we'll come out and go, oh shit, everybody quit. So production's gonna be pretty slow. I gotta dust off my blender skills. Um, but it's just that kind of thing. and. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so. Basically, that was the thought. The thought was we, uh, we give you every bit of information we can think of. And then, um, then you guys will maybe have faith that we're going to keep hammering on this thing and you'll have faith that uh, we've got our shit together enough that um, we can make this happen, right? Because 
your faith is a big investment. You're like, oh, what can we give you? Um, just the fact that you believe the project is going to to happen is a big deal, right? So, um, what's up, Dark Inside? Uh, let me catch up on some stuff I've, I might have missed. Uh, Dozakar said, no, perfect. This makes investment much easier later. They want to see effort investment. This is effort investment. Yep. And you guys are, are uh, you guys are the ones that we're trying to impress. This is a pitch deck to you, the community. Um, Lich said, I mean, look at how far you've come in three years. Another two years should be quite a massive change, even if work remains at the same pace. Yeah, our biggest, you know, the biggest thing, and we're we're very we're very open about this here is, um, you know, we we're moving along really nicely in terms of tech and uh, features, tools. Our tooling is just getting better and better, um, but the. Uh, the amount of content that we're going to go live with is the amount of content that we're going to go live with. Uh, we our, our hardest thing is um, just getting getting art done, and our guys are working as fast as their little arms can go. Um, but getting art done is, for the time being, like our long leg animation environments, things like that. Um, and it, we may find that we. Uh, add a couple more people to the team over time. We may find that um, we uh, figure out how we can maybe tackle some things without sourcing. Um, you know, and what I mean is before uh, early access. But for early access, we're being very upfront with what zones you should expect and sort of what content to expect. And then um, we'll we've got a plan for the content moving forward. That's one of the reasons why we wanted to have the map theme as well right is um it's just we've got a map we've we've got a world we've got an idea of where we want to take things it's just now it's just a matter of us cranking through getting to the early access point and um and seeing how we can go from there Let me see. I'm going to make sure I'm not missing anything crazy. Um, update 40 page has a typo. Let me get on it. Early access info also has a typo. All right, let me fix two typos really quick. Will our early access be on Steam? No, it will not. So don't mind me. I gotta, I gotta fix some typos. Hey, Zukin. There we go. Finally found the page that I'm editing stuff on. Have we said anything about Alpha yet? Uh, trying to stay tuned in. Um, Alpha, alpha beta will be periods within that, uh, before we go into early access. So keep an eye out for that in 2025. Uh, cool weapon actually got it for me. Alpha beta estimated summer 2025. There you go. See, you guys are so good at keeping up on this stuff. Um, let me. Let me edit. Where was that? I'm looking. I'm getting typos inside. So canceling. Okay. Let me find it. Okay. Boom. Save. So that's fixed. And let me grab. I'll give them a little green check mark. Boom, fixed, and early access overview. 
Oh yeah, I was, I'm literally looking at it, but let me find it real quick in here. You guys talk amongst yourselves. Um, Edit. Am I missing anything critical? Oh, well, it's not there. Huh. Early access overview. I wonder if you meant the other page. Fix it. Okay, I get these typos. There we go. I found the typo. Cool. Edit. And save. All right. Typos fixed. Okay. <clears throat> what I miss? Well, I'll scroll back up where Quixana was asking about alpha beta. No, no box price. Where did Tala ask that? No box price. Are you guys planning on doing any form of box packaging with map and all that jazz like in the good old days? Um, Ali says we'd like to, but it's not sorted out yet. That said, merch shop cloth map. So yeah, it's, it's, it's actually something we, um, that's one of those ones where you've got to invest up front um, and you've got to have a uh, certain volume uh, i think well actually i think if you have invested front you probably don't have to have a massive volume either way basically that's one of those things where once we've got cash maybe we could take some of the money from the merch shop once the merch shop goes live and then stockpile it and s s use that to purchase ex essentially things like construction of the boxes and uh maps and doodads and other stuff that we put in the boxes and then sell the boxes as well. Though Ivan slash Stab had a good idea that we could also um, uh, potentially, once we've got the full supply chain figured out and all that, maybe we could do like pre-orders or something. But we'll do we'll deal with that later. Um, Developer Dad says, "Robot, is this early access estimate conservative? As in, you have confidence in it? Hoping so hard that it's not a Pantheon style estimate. Uh, it's pretty conservative at this point." Um, because if you look at what we're what we're promising you for early access content, which again the biggest blocker is content, um, most of this is in in progress, um, and so we're talking about over the next year and a half, almost almost two years, basically. Uh, well, a year and three quarters. We need to ramp up the stuff that we've been doing. Um, and you know 
wrap up stuff we've been doing. Got a few extra zones that we need to add on to that. Um, and then the hope is actually that it's a pretty conservative estimate. And what we may find, um, barring any weird issues, or you never know, right? Like we're a volunteer team. If, you know, if Simon and, and Pattis get sick for three months or whatever, then, well, even then it's still conservative. We just may not have the first expansion content going as quickly as we'd like. Um, so it may be a little, it may be one of those situations where once we go live, you got to wait a bit, a little bit longer than um, we'd hoped. But yeah, so it's it's a it's a conservative estimate, um, based off of the fact that it's a conservative release size. It's a small release size, um, and we're just gonna keep you guys updated as we go. Now, on the flip side, if something happens and we figure out something with our with our tools or if something just clicks and we bang through all of the stuff that we have slated um, for early access, then we'll look at tacking on some additional content for early access because we do want early access going into it to be as robust as possible. Uh, we're just trying to be very realistic about what is possible. Um, and so if we're able to add on uh, more content than uh, we will. So let's see. What other questions do you have? We updated this page as well. Do we see, um, Titan, Titankadonk, Titankadonk, it's like Padunkadonk, only different. Yeah, so Titankadonk said, stoked to hear this dude, do you see playtest as a regular thing between now and then? Uh, we will be having more playtests more frequently uh, on the way to early access, yes. Um, but the next playtest that we have will be predicated on us getting some stuff done that we really need to get done. Um, some some house cleaning, um, some refactors that may need to be re-refactored or finalized or whatever so that they're as uh, smooth as possible. Um, etc. Um, but that's that's a lot of Ollie stuff and some art stuff that we want to do. Like, and some of it's just little things, like getting the new textures throughout Night Harbor would be nice. Um, let's see, what was the next question? Is the RP rule set server plan for early access? Um, Ollie said in short, yes, but the longer answer is probably, um, yeah. We, we're pushing for that. It's not mentioned in there, but we're pushing for it. Um, if you notice, if you read the update, you'll see that we've got uh, a, a new team member who's been with us for, for a little bit now. Um, but this is, I think, the first update where we can mention it. And we've got an even newer new team member that we'll mention in the next update. So uh, our newest team member is not mentioned in this update because I... I'm like a squirrel before winter. Sometimes I'll take a little bit of that stuff and we'll we'll put it for the next update so that we got some stuff to say. Uh, Redeker said, oh shit, did I get hired and forget? It's not, it wouldn't be very memorable. So I can see how you would forget. Um, but yeah, so one of our uh, newest team members, Bullet, Bullet Catcher, um, comes from the GTA 5 RP community and uh, and is helping us get ready there. As a matter of fact, he wrote up a bunch of good stuff that now that the update's out, I need to get back and read. So next week will be my reading week as I'm recovering from surgery. I'll just try to catch up on all this shit. Redeker said, that's not a no. You're right. We did not say you were not hired. Um... 
All of this is on the website. Yeah. So just for folks that are coming in um, a bit late, you can either go to the play button here and it'll start running you through this information. And then um, all of it's linked from this, this month's update as well. How will invites for the closed alpha and beta test work? We're not really a super secret invite type team. Um, what we'll likely do is there will probably be some people that we reach out to similar to friends and family. Um, that'll be a mix of actual friends and actual family and some friends of friends and friends of family and family of those people. Um, and then some people that we just know from the community or whatever. And we'll do some testing like that just to not bullshit you. I mean, that's kind of how it works. Sometimes we do sneak people in um, and because uh, we own the house, so it's not really sneaking people in. It's it's our house. Um, but the uh, thing that we'll be doing is just we'll be having more public play tests. It's much better for us to do a to do public play tests and stress things um, than it is to like try to keep everything on the DL and um, then, you know, miss something with regards to stability or performance or whatever because of that. Equileaf, right on, appreciate it. Um, Nick said, we'll probably send out some random invites ahead of open beta. Make sure you're signed up on the newsletter. Yeah, I think, I think uh, it's been so long since I've regularly hit these commands. Yeah, so we've got a mailing list. Mailing list is great to be on. Discord's great to be on. We're probably going to be sending out more surveys in the future as well, because there are some of these things where we've got questions about, um, you know, different topics that we want to kind of pull you guys because we're kind of on the fence of, ah, oh, we could do it this way, we could do it that way. So we'll definitely, um, we'll ping you on a few things. Will the plane of meat remain open for access until early access launch? I don't see why we would not have it. There's no reason for us to not have it. We like the fact that you guys can get in there. Yeah, plane of meat's local. So don't know why we turn it off. I still think the, we, we still might put in the Georgia guide stones of gameplay. put some some monoliths throughout the plane of meat that just have like the the commands and basically we'll just put the instruction manual in as a bunch of uh yeah just like the eq old eq offline eq tutorial which is honestly i think it was zukin that was actually the first person to go hey can we do can we do something like that and that's that's eventually what led to the plane of meat if i had to I had to guess. Springfield said, thank you for the update 2026. I'll be there. Everything sounds great. Cool, man. Appreciate it. All he said, plain of meat is so cool. Lich is like, you killed the illusion. Freaking programmers. When did we watch that non-stream? Like three months ago. What is Redeker talking about? Non-stream? On-stream? Uh, yeah, I, I think I've popped in there from time to time just going through... Um, just looking at zones and stuff in, uh, in Lantern Viewer. Ali said, playing to meet was me trying to get a place to take screenshots of their characters with gear after the test. Totally a mistake that it became so big and entertaining. Fair. But Zukin did ask if we could do an offline tutorial a long time ago. So I'm going to give him some credit as well. But yes. Yeah, who knows what it'll turn into. Uh, 
What other questions you guys got? As you can say, it sounds like doing that tutorial security risk and we won't ever do it. Did the, but did the EQ tutorial have any of, I don't remember it having like gameplay. Like having you, having you run around and do stuff like we can fake stuff, but yeah, you know, we're limited on what we want to put on the client. Um, getting distracted said groundhog days. I was instructed to poke you about it. Um, so groundhog days just is a random topic. It's probably confusing to people, but Ollie had that in the note in the update. Excuse me. Uh, basically, it's for people that have been on the stream when we were talking about day night cycle. It's just the thing that I was talking about where we repeat the same day in game 20 times so that um, in game days and out of game days uh, keep a consistent pace. Um, so the. Um, the thing that we wanted to be able to do is if we if we have um things like the moon cycle which is in now right we've got different uh lunar cycles or if we've got hey this guy's only gonna you know be in town for three days we didn't want that to be three in-game days because that goes by so quick so it would be three days um and in game that day would repeat like groundhog day the wonderful movie with bill murray that you should watch every year um, the, the day just repeats 20 times each actual day and then moves into the next day because we've got like in, in game, you know, days of the week named and we're working through the, you know, we've got the calendar and the years and all that shit. So does that make sense? Getting distracted. Um. Now your character won't reset. The day will just reset. Kind of like how Bill Murray's knowledge did not reset from day to day, but the day did reset. And so he could exploit that day. You can exploit like Bill Murray. Um, is the map the map? The map is the map. Naturally, some details may change over time, etc. But, um, for the most part, expect the map to be the map. It's how we've been thinking about it. You don't get to see all of it here. Okay. Um, but you'll be seeing more and more of the map um, as we go. Ali said, I don't know if I added it to the tech update, but we also have longitudes for zones now. It has an actual effect. Um, you did mention something, if I remember correctly, in the update about uh, relative position of the zone or zone position on the world relative to like the sun and moons and stuff. What's an island expedition? Zinfar will be giving more information on that um, later, but the super, super summary of it is, it is a opportunity to invest. Wait a second. You will have the opportunity to in, I'm going to use opportunity too many fucking times in a sentence. You'll be able to invest in the opportunity to reach certain content. Think of it as, think of it as a type of content that you work towards. Say opportunity one more time. Yeah. What can I say? It's 1033 PM. I'm old.
and I did want to pick my words carefully. Um, we're working through details on it. Uh, basic concepts been something that we've had uh, in our minds for a few years now, but we want to we'll flesh it out more in terms of the, the the specifics, and then we'll probably not give you those specifics anyways. Um, we'll give you a high level understanding of what it is, and then you'll experience the specifics once you get in game. Do you feel like weight has been lifted now that all this information is out? Um, it's exciting. It's exciting to be able to get it out and share it. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what the reaction is. The... The hope is, again, going back and, you know, this is mainly for folks that maybe just came in or whatever. The hope is that um, we're able to answer all of your questions. If we find questions that are unanswered, we will add it to our list here uh, so that we can ensure that there's no kind of confusion and people getting the wrong ideas about what we're trying to accomplish here. Um, hey, Olo. It's going good. And then um, we're really hoping for folks that maybe are looking at early access to timeline, et cetera, and kind of like, what does this mean? Or, you know, any, any additional question that's not explicitly answered in the FAQ, but could probably be answered if you had the information provided to you, hopefully will be handled by the roadmaps the breakdown of our development history and the forward-looking information with regards to our post-launch plan, which is built on the foundation of what have we done to date in these areas. Make sense? And then um, in terms of you know, in terms of apprehension, I, I'm I am just kind of curious to see not not just how you guys are going to take the information, um, but then how it's perceived by the folks that are kind of tangentially aware of the project um, and uh, you know other folks that are just kind of just getting the info or whatever lich says you want me to turn my salt on well you might as well you might as well do it here because it's easier for me to respond to you via voice than it is to read it on discord and then shake my head for a bit and then type up a 20 paragraph response so what do you got lich Stop with the clown emojis. I'm I'm talking to Reddit. You did stop with the clown emojis, white band. And I I was lich. I was literally about to say that it would it was unfair for Reddit to point that out because he wasn't the one that got called out for it. You were, and you promptly stopped. And I appreciate that. Nicodemus says website update looks great. Hard to believe we are where we are. So a lot of road left to travel. Well, the, the interesting thing as well with like early access is, um, just, just going live. I mean, in theory, We've got an infinite amount of road to to uh, to travel. I mean, EQ is still putting out content, right? Twenty five years later, so we're kind of like we might as well just get started.
Lich. Are you, uh, were you going to say something or, or are you just asking general, generally speaking about the salt? Um, hey, brown butcher. Oh, there we go. I'm going to, I'm going to read it before reading it out loud. Um, the, okay. So he said, I think everything I've read thus far in this update sounds good. And I'm not like flaming you guys for this, uh, no wipe early access idea, but I am wary of it. Fair enough. Given you guys have nearly two years, I'm expecting it will be fine. Uh, but like to not have deep raises is a bit rough and the list of zones while a ton of fun seems a little light. Um, we would love to be able to do, no, you're not, there's nothing wrong about that wording at all. Um, yeah, we'd love to do, we'd love to do all of the character races and, um, have a lot more, uh, a lot more content. It's just, we've mapped out what we think is, uh, realistic for us and been conservative so that we're not over promising. Like I said, we'd rather under promise and maybe beat that, uh, than, than over promise and come up like super, super short. So if something, if something comes up. Um, if something comes up where we're able to, or, or something comes up where we really get behind, then we'll just make that known. Um, but this isn't one of those things where we just make up some random shit and then all of a sudden we're off by a couple years. Uh, this is what we think realistically could allow us to go forward. Um, and so with something like the deep races of one of the other things that is a consideration and it may not be something everybody agrees with, but there's this idea of, all right, so if we can't do everything at once anyways, why not try to get those guys in for the, the first like module where we're being deep focused and focusing on the deep health city and see if we can package it together to be something that feels kind of good together. Um, even if they're not available at launch, right? or because they're not available at launch. So that's what we'll be working towards there. Um, and you never know, right? Like for us as well, one of the things that we've got is we've tried to keep the team as small as possible for as long as possible and add people when we really need them and when we find the right people and when the chemistry's right. Um, excuse me. Um, so we're at 22 people now, basically roughly um, and uh, we may find that we find the right additional person here and there that we can add. Um, and given our size, adding one more person that is, is capable and dedicated as one of the two people or one of the one people <laughs> person that we have in an area allows us to up that capability quite a bit, right? So, um, but no. I, everything you just said, Lich, is a 100% fair concern and a legit criticism. Um, D Loves Pudding says, if you want an investor's viewpoint, you just de-risk the venture by about $2 million. If I was looking to get involved in this style MMO, you're in a stronger position today than if you had asked me three years ago. Yep, I'd be chomping at the bit to talk to you. Yep, our, our biggest challenge is we're making a very specific type of MMO. And so uh, we don't know that, we, we don't have an expectation that there's a lot of investors out there for us. Um, we will take the information that we have here and make a little pitch deck or whatever, just in case there just happens to be that very special someone for us. But, um, you know, and then we'll update based on that. But in the meantime, any investor could basically just come to our webpage and get a ton of fucking information. Good XP. Thank you for the follow. Let me catch up on, um, let me catch up on your comments. Uh, Redeker says servers that go up live as part of the early access launch will not be reset or wiped. It is important to note that early access is not a head start period, but the initial launch of the game. Yes. 
We'd love to be released already as well. The, the problem is then we have even less content. Um, and we are absolutely not ready for release content aside. Um... Where's the super deluxe edition with the striped leopard mount and the free skins? Uh, yeah, I know you're joking. Tech writer said we'll also sell socks for extended gaming sessions. I thought that was funny. I appreciate that you appreciate it. Um, will you be able to sign up before launch? If so, how long before that? Uh, you can make an account right now, Fabricio. If you haven't made an account yet, you can do it here. So that you're ready to go when uh, it's playtest time. Update my browser. Oh, this red button over here. <laughs> I don't update shit. <laughs> what happened to the game? Sean got hacked again. Why? He doesn't update anything. He never updates anything. Ask Ollie. Every, every time I, I do a screen share to like, I, Ollie, I've got a problem with something. He'll look at whatever tool I'm using. He's like, why, why is that not updated? And everything is in light mode. Yeah. Is it possible to turn up the background music a bit? Is this a new song? It is a new song. Let me know if I turn it up too loud. I'll keep an eye out. John said, Sean, I run brave because it's secure. Also, Sean, I ain't updating shit. <laughs> brave was secure when I got it. Um, don't see no box price, Brown Butcher said. Oh, I see, oh shit, I read that wrong. <laughs> Brown Butcher said, I don't see no box price. Actually, he said, I see no box price. Does that mean early access is free to play? No, you got to pay a subscription. Come on, man. Has Daybreak said anything yet about anything that's similar to EQ? Uh, they haven't, but a Matrix Hunter, it would also be very interesting to see what they would point out um, because a lot of people ask this question um, and it's not... It doesn't really work like that. As long as we're not using any of their, their specific IP, um, different features and different elements of different games look similar and that happens and that's life. Um, watch, I get a cease and desist in the mail tomorrow. But uh, if, if you want a good example of that, there's a new Marvel game coming out that's uh, that's basically just Overwatch. Look at it, it's it's Overwatch. And uh, for us, we're doing a lot of things differently. There's also some stuff that looks similar. Um, that's just kind of how shit works. Is there any concern for class build variety as it stands? The classes on the wiki are very linear in progression. Progression still just being worked through. Um, just Matt, dude. That'll be one of those things that if you're not in our Discord, uh, be sure to come on stream deck. Be sure to be in our Discord and um, ask questions there. Keep an eye on things. Uh, We'll be working on classes from now until we go live, so. With there only being two cities in the start of early access, maybe it'd be a good idea to let us pick between those two cities to start while waiting on the rest. Um, potentially. We're having some discussions on some things related to that. There'll be more, more talk about that over the next two years. 
Uh, there's got to be some multi-billionaires, millionaires out there that play DQ and love it. Um, yeah, we, well, we would just have to find, uh, we'd have to find one that likes us that we also like. That, that could potentially be a challenge. Um, just need a co-donation, boom, funded for five years. Uh, I don't know that that would work that way. Also, Ko, Ko has had a different opinion of the game each time he's had someone show it to him for the first time. So, I, I don't, I don't know if that would be the move for us. Not that we have anything against Ko. Seems like a very nice guy. I thought the race, uh, class race balance question was based on like only humans can be like 60% of the classes or whatever the number is. I think humans can be every class. Eventually they may be distributed between multiple starting areas slash cities, um, those classes, but. Do we have a target subscriber number we would like to reach going into early access. Um, many, but not so many that we don't know where to put them all. But we'll be figuring that out as we go. If anything, um, honestly, I, I'm just speaking off the cuff from my end, not speaking for the team. I probably wouldn't mind if our early access started pretty small and just slowly ramped up in terms of number of subscribers. You know, get the first couple hundred of you in here and we're good. We'll get the ball rolling and we'll just kind of build up. Um, So Dayu said, uh, hey folks, great to see so much information coming out. I love how in-depth it is. Right on. Appreciate you saying that. Show it to him for the first time again. Yeah, I, and that may be the case, right? Like once we're further along and there's more information out there or whatever, maybe it'll be easier for someone kind of seeing it cold. Uh, even if it's not for the first time, sometimes seeing something that you're not really looking for or whatever you're like, oh, someone mentions it, and it's like, okay, sure, whatever. Um, but yeah, people like Co or whomever uh, can check out the information and then kind of see if it makes sense. Um, early access will launch in 2026. Can we buy sooner? Asking for myself so I can start paying my monthly sub now. Uh, that would not be appropriate. Um, but we may we may have the merch shop up and stuff like that beforehand. Um, it's funny, the only downside to like getting the merch shop up, um, in the past we were like, we didn't want to take any money for anything without really feeling like we could tell you guys the game's a thing and you won't think we're just trying to like make money off of promises or whatever. Uh, but then the next big problem with the merch shop will be once the money comes in, uh, then we've actually got to do bookkeeping. <laughs> And you know how I feel about bookkeeping? About the same as I feel about updating my browser. <laughs> and uh, Ollie, but I'll, Ollie's like, I'll do the bookkeeping. And I, I just hit X. Disbelief. So we'll we'll probably have to have a, a bookkeeper that we pay a little bit each month once we start getting some uh, money in. Ollie said, I don't like doing the bookkeeping. I know you don't. <laughs> Somebody has to. Okay. Are you trying to take credit for... I always feel bad. 
voice for that. I appreciate the work that you've done on the bookkeeping, Ollie. That is work that was then done on top of all the work that I had already done on the bookkeeping. But I do appreciate you. You made spreadsheets smart, though. Well, they're not smart enough to put their own data in them. You know what I'm saying? But the, the spreadsheets are pretty smart. And I do like them. You did a good job. And we would not have that if you had not done work on it. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, everybody is saying take the money now. I'm telling you, this is not financial advice, but just go buy lottery tickets between now and then or put the shit in the bank, like Redeker said. Open a new bank account, transfer $15 to it each month, maybe invest in some CDs or bonds. I'm not going to say Bitcoin, but you should probably just get some fucking Bitcoin as well. You don't have to send us the Bitcoin. You can cash down and send us the money. Not financial advice. Also, uh, not religious advice for those of you that don't like bitcoins um but yeah um thoughts about recruiter friend system for getting friends family into the game uh we'll we'll see what we can do on that front um we'll have gift subs so, and that's mentioned in the information. So that should help on that front, but yeah. Puddin said, don't worry y'all. I'll start an unofficial Eminem OnlyFans and y'all um, can get Ogre sneak peeks. All funds will go to Eminem. How you make the money is uh, is up to you. Zilla said a joke reuse detected. Which one? Bone chips? I missed what Nicodemus said. Nicodemus said, bone chips, the new cryptocurrency. I'll give you that one. That was good. Only foot bones. Cryptocurrency. We're getting better. One day, we're going to look back. I think it's it's going to be a weird experience for people to, um, you know, all we need to do is if we can just be like somewhat moderately successful and have our little, our little game business, making our little indie MMO, that's still enough for people to look back and, and watch years of completely unprofessional streams and us just doing random shit. We're like, what are we doing? We're making our corporate website. <laughs> like, we just duct tape a bunch of shit together for a few years. Boom! Business. We have no CEO. We have no CFO. We will need a bookkeeper, though. We may not even do that. We may not have a bookkeeper either. <laughs> what happened to Eminem? Well, they were eventually audited. <laughs> We've got shoe boxes with like receipts in it and shit. Oh my god. <sighs> Sir, your money under the mattress. Yeah. It is 
uh, in all seriousness, it is tax time though. I got an email today from our tax people. I mean, we do have tax people. We do pay for tax people. That's a bullet here, right? Look, costs and post launch plans. Annual tax filings. They're not cheap either. Um, don't need a huge. Ooh, sorry, guys. Don't need a huge player base if we keep uh, if upkeep costs are fairly low. Yeah, I mean. For the time being, all of our costs are relatively low, um, just because we're absorbing most of that. But um, things like server costs and, and stuff like that, it, it scales with the player base, right? So the more players we have, the more that costs, but that cost is just coming out of the subscription, so. My dad's friend, my dad's friend's dad used to throw all his money in a pile in the basement. Was he Scrooge McDuck or? What did that look like? You guys in the streams are what sold me on the game. I have seen a lot of MMOs since EQ and none of them made me this excited. I'm glad that we got you excited. In my head, there were so in so many inappropriate jokes that just I couldn't formulate. I'm typically not super articulate. I'm definitely not at eleven. Any thoughts given to what stage we would be able to start streaming the game, Rev Chumley? What do you mean? Like alpha, beta, etc. Um, there may be something that comes up that makes me a liar on this, but it's my belief that if if you're in game, you should be able to stream it. With the exception of we've asked friends and family in the past to not stream, um, for a couple of reasons. One, we didn't want to didn't want to create a bunch of turmoil in the community because not everybody was in the test. Um, two. It kind of outs other people that are in the test. And so then people in the community might be like, hey, you know, DMing, how did you get in? I'm not in, that kind of thing. So uh, that's, I think, the only time we've asked people to not stream. But if you're in game, stream. Um, just like all this information's on a website here. So you can take it and share it and do what you want. Um,. Discord. Okay, Discord's not too crazy. Cool. Discord didn't recognize the game for me during the last stress test. Um, don't know if that was on my end or... So you can Discord stream. Oh, that's interesting. Never considered that. Um, that's probably something we need to look into. Like, we're not official on YouTube either yet. Despite having... I think we've got like 500 VODs about the making of Monsters and Memories, but we still don't have an official Monsters and Memory category. Um, so, and I think we've got to be listed on some bullshit before uh, it's automatically detected and then made a category within YouTube, so. Uh, Springfield said, 
I know I really love the in-depth video on the classes and still watch it over and over again while at work and would love to see a video like that, but for the races or history of Aetheril, if possible. So the the challenge on the lore part of it is, again, we will find the right level of lore to get out maybe, um, but we really, we want to try to keep as much of that uh, in game so that you guys can discover it um as possible but we'll we'll get more posted i'm sure but it'll never be a ton um you know because it, it almost feels like if we come up with a lot of really cool shit um and then we're putting in confluence or whatever then it it feels like we've missed an opportunity to find ways to deliver that in game if we just like started posting it on the website, right? Um, so, and and don't get me wrong, there's also still a lot of work to be done in that area. Uh, let's see. D loves pudding says, I'm sure this is obvious enough, but just for posterity, this is the most open, transparent, and welcoming of community feedback game development teams. I have ever encountered and I work in the games industry. I can confirm he does work in the games industry. This is true. I'm so proud of you all. This is a huge milestone and I want to call out all your efforts. Thank you, buddy. And our memory of the times where we were running around in Valheim during the early, early days of the development of this, uh, will live forever. Future games will be made the Eminem way because of you guys. Yes, if we don't screw it up, there may be a chance that some of the things that we do will be, uh, I, you know what? It's rare that I say shit like this, but I'll go ahead and say, it. I feel like we're already starting to influence some different games. Like, you can kind of see it every once in a while, even if it's indirect. It's like, hmm, they're doing things a little differently now. So, and that's not a bad thing, right? That's what we want to do. If the stuff that we're doing makes sense and it's good for us and it's good for you guys, then hopefully more people do it. Now, on the flip side, uh, we could be, you know, this level of information or whatever um, could absolutely be the wrong way to go. And we can't act like it's the right way to go until after we've shown that it works. Um, Salation said the roadmap looks pretty reasonable to me considering everyone's working for free. Um, I appreciate that. And again, it's uh, at the end of the day, you guys you guys, as players, ultimately, we realize that all you care about is you want as much of the best game that you can get as possible. And that's fair. <clears throat> that's what we're here for. We're not here to necessarily be a just a cool story or whatever. Um, we're here to make a good quality game um, and something that you'll enjoy. Uh, so, you know, we definitely keep that in mind. Uh, at the end of the day, you don't give a shit about the tools. You don't care about the process. Ultimately, us being completely transparent or completely opaque and not telling you shit, it doesn't matter. What matters is you get a game and you enjoy the game. Um, so with that in mind, what we're hoping is that um, we can we can show you that we're doing as much as we possibly can. And we're acknowledging from the beginning that we are not providing you with, at the onset, providing you with the game that if we could snap our fingers and magically make a game appear, that we would want to give you. We'd love to give you the, the full game world completely fleshed out with all of the content and um you know all of that but 
we want to show you that we have a plan for getting there. And for a lot of people that don't want to play in the early stages, um, when things are still being built out, then, you know, I think we even address that in here, right? Uh, I, I could have sworn Nick had one in here, right? Like, uh, where is it at? What if I don't want to play the game until the game is further along? Won't I be far behind? We realize that a number of players would prefer a fully fleshed out game world and vision to start their adventures in Monsters and Memories. Coinciding with certain major content releases and or other milestones, we will be releasing a fresh server or servers where all players can start off on equal footing. Right? So... Yeah, for some folks that really want a bigger game and they're like, oh, you know what? Just wait until 2028. Just come back in 2028. So. D says in an age when we've been fed uh, so many promises for 20 plus years uh, since this MMO genre was created, being a part of the development cycle is really reassuring. Yeah, and again, at the end of the day, we also know like this update is really super exciting for us. Um, these milestones are always a lot of fun, like first stress test, first big play test, this type of thing. They're all fun. Uh, but we also know at, at the end of the day, it's all about us just getting back in there and making the game. Um, so uh, because we we still have to deliver on on all this. Um, Lycano says the freedom of information uh, is great. It seems like it becomes detrimental for games once they start making money. Um, then it's a double-edged sword that affects people who want a return on their investment. Um, yeah, that's why we were very open about what the investment is in this game, right? Like we we show you explicitly. Um, This is the this is our payback when you know like we can define our payback window based off the number of subs that we have relative to the money that we spent so far. This number will be a bit bigger by the time we go live, and we you know can update you and let you know what that number is. And since we're the only ones that we have to pay back, we can also give ourselves a break on how long it takes to pay it back depending on what's going on. Um, but yeah, so, and then, like I said, uh, we, uh, we break down in here our plan for once the money's coming in, we really want to be able to show you, like, I think it'd be interesting. Everybody's afraid to show, like, subscriber numbers and other things, right? Because I th the fear, at least in my experience on working on MMOs, is if you show the numbers, if there's a downward trend, then it can cause everybody to bail, right? Like, oh shit, this isn't a cool nightclub anymore. I'm gonna go find a different one or whatever. Or, you know, this restaurant sucks now. So let's go find another one. And that, that can absolutely happen. But I mean, people guess at that stuff anyways. It's like, why bullshit? It's the same thing I've seen in meetings, like company meetings. So you're in a company and if you ask any CEO, they're like, we got the best people in the world. They're the smartest people. They're just, they're fucking clever, blah, blah, blah. That same CEO will then get up and like give a presentation that's just like bullshitting, cherry picking numbers, trying to make things sound better than they are or whatever it is. And it's like, I mean, I've been there as a, as a producer in the past, you know, I've been an executive and going, going up and like, or being a part of a presentation, it's kind of like, twisting things to make it sound as rosy as possible knowing that the people you're looking out at are hundreds of some of the smartest people in the world it's uh yeah it's like that one we have 50 million accounts right yeah how many of them are actually active right like we have 90 million registered users right but what's your monthly active users like what does that look like over the last year right is what's that trend and so for me it's more um i think it's more important to go up there and be like hey 
we're seeing a downtrend here, here, and here. No bullshit. And here's where it'll end up if we don't change stuff. Like, let's address it. And for the people that are like, oh, well, I'm going to jump ship. Well, fucking jump ship. The ship will get lighter. Um, so, you know, we'll just be honest with you guys and, and we'll see how it goes. Um, will the zones released for early access be finished for that release or still work in progress? When we release zones, they should be finished. Will the UI be finished too? Thanks for answering, Salacia said. Um, if you check out our update, you'll see that we're doing a lot of UI work. Um, so the yeah, the, the goal is for it to be finished. And if we, if we get close to early access and core systems or core content or whatever that's needed for us to go into what we've defined as our launch point are not done, we will push the date. So, um, there is lots of UI work going on as we speak. Hey, Isan. Uh, what's your policy if people set up emulator servers for Eminem eventually? Um, when we get to the point that, you know, check back with us later. I, I don't want to, I don't want to misspeak, but I think it's, it's feasible that we could find a, a point in our, in our far, far future where, you know, if we're very successful, then we'll actually even help you with Eminem emulators and others. Um, Trying to catch up on chat. It's smart, but you won't end up running Activision. That's not exactly a bad thing. Yeah, trust me, I'm not. Uh, there's a number of reasons. I'm, I'm not working at other companies for for a variety of reasons. Some of it's just I'm probably not that good at my job, but good enough to be here hanging out with you guys. Um, As you update the UI and add options, will you be able to see those updates in the plane of me? I'm assuming if you've, if we put them on the patcher and then you've gotten that update, then yeah. The other said, hey, Sean, update looks great. You guys are so productive. Thank you. How you doing? Now said finished as in a playable state, but I assume that doesn't stop you from going back and adding more content, etc. Correct. Um, one thing there will there will inevitably inevitably be times where we go back into old zones and tweak them, like actually tweak tweak them. You may have to re-download the zone just because there's bound to be like weird shit that we want to put in or uncover or whatever. Um, uh, the bulk of what we do is data driven um, for certain things that are art based that we want to be dynamic we're, we're trying to factor that in um, as we go so um, yeah, we're, we're trying to make it as easy for us to modify certain aspects of the content as possible pretty much on the fly it's not, so 
Zugan's gonna get bored if there are only seven player races. I'm gonna expect we get a couple more, honestly. Um, you never know, but I would say that don't forget that the same guys that are making our player races are also making our NPCs. Um, and as we, one of the reasons, uh, you know, when people talk about uh, more biomes and things like that, well, as you hit more zones, you probably want to see more different NPCs. Um, so, yeah, but he hammered out a wolf in the night. Dude's a boss. Uh, yes, but then at some point we also run into the fact that we've got one Urken staff at the moment who is doing animations. Though I have volunteered to spend a few days a month uh, doing doing some animation work based off of the extreme popularity of my capsule my capsule animations don't laugh jasmine they w listen when all you have is a capsule and two balls to <laughs> be very expressive with did you see did you see the the degree of expression that i did with those balls Pineapple? Okay. Even Jasmine's invoking pineapple. But it's true. You've seen the videos. I do remember the weird bump on the back of their head when they sat down and started casting. That was unintentional. There wasn't a theme there. What kind of... What kind of inappropriate bro dude game development do you think this is, Ollie? What did you guys do for marketing? You are on such a tight budget. We just said a bunch of inappropriate shit. <laughs> Twitter did the rest. Between Twitter and Reddit, everybody was aware of us. Um, uh, let's see. Zukin rightfully pointed out that he also has to make armor and spells. Oh yeah, spell effects for sure. Good job so far. Um, I'm laughing that she called pineapple. I heard pineapple. Uh, can we get a particle effect that just looks like pineapple on silence type spells? Little pineapple slices. D said, between my wife and I, it's not pineapple, it's bananas. Hey, everybody's entitled to their own fruit. Look forward to a capsule emulator one day. If I get kicked off the team, <laughs> I'm stealing the code and we're, we're making a capsule game. Hey, Sparrow. Rubitis or Rubitis said, I feel like no box price, but having a $15 sub is such a smart sweet spot. Uh, what made you all come to that price? It just, it just makes sense, I think. Actually, it, it felt like it was pretty common. Matter of fact, it, it feels like it's such a common thing that you saying that just now makes me wonder if I'm, I'm so bad at missing jokes. They always, ha people have to explain like, are you being sarcastic? People are like, yes. I'm like, oh, fuck. Um, Snot said, are you expecting modules to be about as impactful as some other MMOs expansions, whole new continents, level caps, races, blah, 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 or do you think they'll be smaller, a few zones per module, or maybe class race, a bit more frequent? Um, in theory, a mix of both, but it's really going to come down to our capability, right? Like, um, expect, expect smaller at first um but it doesn't preclude bigger later if that makes sense like in theory we could do a module that's one zone or we could do a module that's 10 zones um and it could be one zone with some reused npcs and nothing else or it could be you know five or six or seven zones with a new race that type of thing so it 
produce section of the grocery store must be really triggering for our community. Thanks, Sparrow. Sparrow said, congrats on a release date. Um, yeah, pour through the information. See, hopefully we've given you plenty to, to check out there. Rubita said, no sarcasm. I know the $15 sub is common. Uh, just never seen it match with uh, no price entry. Usually 40 bucks pros uh, 40 bucks box price tacked onto it unless I'm out of the indie MMO loop. I'm actually, I'm unsure. I honestly, I haven't kept up. I thought some people did, some people didn't. Um, the box price makes sense for some products uh, that are like the teams, especially that got funding. If, um, if they got funding, external funding, the box price makes a lot of sense for them because they're trying to basically narrow the payback window as much as possible. You know, so if they got a decent chunk of cash to um, up front to help them get the game out the door, uh, which makes perfect sense. That's how most uh, teams operate. Um, uh, then the box price is nice because it, it gives you a nice little head start to recoup. Um, for us, honestly, we were talking about this in relation to some other stuff um, in the last few days. And... Um, I remember it was like 2002 or 2003, I took a trip to tai, uh, Taiwan for uh, when I was working at Sony Online because we were doing like an EverQuest release. And I, I think it was like 2002, 2003. Um, and when I got over there, I was shocked at like how prevalent the gaming culture was. Like PC gaming was huge. They had PC games in 7-Eleven, right? Like, and they had like Moo Online and stuff like that on buses and in bus benches and shit. Um, and so the the thing that they were doing was like they, they would just hand you free software, but you had to pay for a subscription, right? And so the software is like install this, sign up, go. And it's just that little bit of a removal of a barrier to entry um, helps then just get you in and start the sub rolling. Uh, Vikano says, does the box price help prevent at least some botting issues? Um, it probably adds to the help on that front because it makes it a little bit more expensive to get started, but you're still, you know, paying for a sub will also help with botting issues. Because you still got to pay for all of those bots. It's when, when games are free, but they have like potent, like different upsells or whatever, then you're, you're going to see bots be more prevalent. Um, now, if that makes sense, um, Openovo said exciting news. We'll just have to be patient. I hope we get, uh, plenty of tests. Yeah, exactly. And we're, we're hoping to get more of them. Hey, Aaron Ellis. Um, Breakfast Abandoned said, Rubidus, to be fair, free to play has become so commonplace as a pricing structure, but normally it's paired with microtransactions. So a free to play model without microtransaction sub makes plenty of sense. Yeah, yeah cause I don't really look at it. It's, it's not, free to play it's just you're not paying up front but you you have to pay a subscription so is the merch store merch store coming soon uh we've got to get with the team and talk about when we're all comfortable having it go live then we've got to look a little bit into no bullshit the bookkeeping side of things and get a few things set up so that it helps on that front and we're actually being grown-ups about it um and then we've got to probably update the inventory on the um because it's a print-on-demand shop initially um update the inventory and update the pricing so that we don't lose money which is possible 
um, on shipping and stuff like that. So we got to go through and make sure all the pricing and the shipping is uh, fixed. And then we could probably get it going. Speaking of policing servers, do you guys have a pl plan on having a guide program? Um, not at the moment. Uh, we'll, we'll start with on team customer service, even if that is us initially. Um, just because there are some potential legal concerns with volunteer programs of that sort. And they did come up in the past and I don't know what the history more recently has been on that, but it's a, it's a little bit sketchier once we start taking money. Open up said I only screamed through the skim through the details, but did y'all mention exactly how access to alpha will work? Um, It'll probably be a combination of invites and some open open testing. Nice flat build ball caps and hoodie are all I want. 200 bucks. You should be able to afford that with those two things with that much money. An M&M shirt that says this is your dad's MMO. If you can find one other, 100 other people that would buy that shirt, then we'll make it. Please don't ever add Kronos Plex tokens to Eminem. Uh, yeah, we have no plans to. Can I get an Eminem bikini? Potentially. I've got to check what's available. You guys are serious right now, huh? All right, well, start a petition in Discord. Start a petition in Discord. Am I, am I missing something? You guys don't think that that means it would automatically make the merch store come up, right? I'm just saying when the merch store does come up, then we might have that t-shirt. Um, plus two for Eminem Bikini. Who's your daddy and what does he do? Play him in him. Holy shit, you guys have the worst t-shirt ideas I've ever heard of. <laughs> We're gonna have worst t-shirt of the month contest. And we once the merch store is up, we will we will for we will for sure. We'll make it a pre-order thing though. Like you have to get you have to get um X number of pre-orders on your horrible shirt and then we'll make it happen. Wet Eminem t-shirt contest. <laughs> Open up, will you be the person wearing the t-shirt? Um... Can you imagine a meetup and we all show up in our mankinis? I could actually imagine it. You guys are... Eminem Beard Balm. Maybe once we're bigger. You'll you'll know we've finally made it. When we're able to do Beard Balm. Gravity Bong? Don't you just cut the bottom off a bottle like a normal person? That's what two liter bottles are for. Eminem, the best MMO. We pinky swear. <laughs> I love it. Speaking of, it's healing really nicely. Lich said, gotta head out now. We'll watch the VOD later. Grats and love you guys. Don't let us nerds down. We're, you know what? We are rooting for us to not let you down. 
If anybody's rooting for us, it is us. Except some days. Some days we're also like, oh, screw us. Back in the day, uh, I had that old EverQuest shirt, got Sal. Sure was awesome. Dude, we saw those all over the fanfares. I swear I used to have one in a box. Um, here. Look, I'll show you. My pinky is almost... Well, my pinky is actually fully healed. It's just working through some of the phantom pain. But under a month, I'm telling you. I told Jasmine I'm like Wolverine. So that's what happens when you say your prayers and take your vitamins. Mm -mm. It's growing back. Exactly. Uh, with Meister 95 said, been checking out your old EQ dev interviews. Any plans on doing more? Man, I would like to, and I've pinged people on occasion about like maybe doing a, another one or adding some, but you'd be shocked. Like, Excuse me. Um, time really flies by. It's already April. Next week's April. That's month four. <laughs> That's month three and a half. Um, shit. I don't really have a good way to do four. <laughs> That's month four. So, um... So it's moving pretty fast. The saying's copywritten by Hulk Hogan. <laughs> I didn't say the whole thing. I'm gonna have so many cease and desist tomorrow after this. Um, uh, the one thing I hear people mention most um, of their EQ swag is a cloth map. Gotta have those. Oh, for sure. Um, let's see. Data Science Ninja said, I really respect what you guys are doing. Can't wait to play Eminem. Thanks for being so transparent. Thank you for that. Sparrow said, I nearly chopped off the tip of my thumb last week. It went a third of the way through. Wow. <sighs> That's horrible. Our our garden neighbor, she works uh, she works in the the butcher's section, like the meat section of a supermarket, and she just like at an angle just kind of took diagonally the tip of her finger off. It was it was tough. I'm sorry that happened. That is no fun. That hurts. I honestly think I'd rather I have it completely cut off and only have a chunk cut off. That sounds way more painful. Yeah, I mean, I got to be unconscious. They did it pretty cleanly. They sewed it up pretty well. You, on the other hand, were just doing it yourself. Stop that. Sparrow was like, all the cool kids are cutting their fingers off. Don't let me be a bad influence. Is the German 4? No, I actually thought this was the German 4, and it's not. Jasmine said it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, because otherwise it would be 1, 2, 3, 4. It's awkward. It feels weird. Well, we've got to let we've got to let the Americans know so that they don't get caught next time they're behind enemy lines. Time really does fly by. I feel like I found out this project maybe six or eight months ago, um, so I didn't have to wait the initial three years. 
Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's funny. It's like, we talk about the... Uh, we talk about the fact that... We've got a couple years, but it's it's going to move fast. So we'll we'll basically just be maintaining the uh, tempo and increasing it in, in some cases to be able to hit this. But we'll let you know as we go, right? Like we'll we'll continue to update. Um, we'll continue to update our roadmaps and keep you apprised of what's going on and let you know if some weird shit happens. Sparrow said, "Have to jet. Have an awesome night." Thank you, Sparrow. It's uh, 11.40 p.m. my time, so I won't be on like a huge amount longer. And then that will be it for today. Tomorrow, um, tonight's stream is making up for the lack of stream tomorrow. Since tomorrow is Good Friday and we have the day off and we're going to fully take the day off. What's up, most dang spy? D said, one of my fingers had an interesting run-in with a mandolin slicer. Isn't a mandolin slicer... Is that... That's like the spinny ones that you do, like, bread and lunch meat and stuff on, right? Mandolin's an instrument. Here, I'll show you what a mandolin slicer is. Mandolin slicer. Oh, no, it's... Oh, it's the... It's the that one. That's probably a clip. Um Yeah, you gotta be careful with them. Is this roadmap newish? Um all of these sections on the site are new. So if you go to play, it'll bring you here. Um, it gives you sort of the top level info dates, um, takes you back to the accounts page. If you need to register your account, um, takes you to the FAQ, the early access FAQ, um, and then run maps and stuff. And then this is new. Yeah. Matter of fact, we're adjusting this right up into launch or until the site came up. Oh. Valkron said, I'm the sort of guy that just wants to play it when it's ready to be out, but I'll be there day one for sure. Yeah, I mean, and it's understandable. And I think what may happen is there may be a number of people that show up um, at launch and check it out for a bit. And if the stuff sp that they're specifically interested in isn't there yet, like a race or whatever, um, or if, you know, they just want more of the world or whatever it's going to be, um, then you can always stop for a bit and then come back when a new module comes out and there's an update that it's got stuff in it that you like or you want to check in or whatever so yeah so but our hope is that in um in playing you know play testing beforehand and in uh, doing everything we can to basically just get things stable and running smooth that, um, you know, by the time we go into early access, it, it just, it feels like a solid and relatively polished, but a smaller version of the eventual game. Um, and so you won't be, uh, you won't be the goal is for you to not be struggling with bullshit that uh, could have been avoided. Um, you know, obvious bugs, server issues, blah, blah, blah. OpenOA says, being part of the process is a journey of its own. Just cool to see how things progress and develop it. Yeah, I mean, that honestly, that was the original intent of the project. When we first talked about it, we talked about like, hey, it would be fun to make this, but 
uh, let's see if we can do this really openly so that it can be an uh, ongoing open discussion about game development more than anything. And then as we went, it became more and more like, oh shit, we really want to make this game. And we had a pretty good idea of what it was that we wanted to make. Um, and if you go to, like, if you go to the, oh, here, you know, a lot of, the, there hasn't been a huge amount of deviation from our original breakdown of what it is that we want to make. All right. There are a couple little things added here or there, or removed here and there, but. A little off the topic, but what was my first main character in EQ? A uh, half-elf warrior who started in Kanos. And I played him to 65. I stopped playing around. Stopped playing around omens, I guess. Dude, I was I was blown away by Fippy. I was I was amazed by flip yeah, by Fippy. Going into Blackborough in those early days was one of the craziest experiences ever in a game. It was so insane to see it. I know it's far off, but do you think you'll continue weekly stream post early access? Post early access, like after we're done with early access or during early access? During early access for sure. At launch, yeah, why not? Black Barrel and then finally the run to Freeport. After a while is my best memory of it. Uh, MMO, Vikano said, yeah. Two big ones for me as well. My, my like three just from that era were logging in the first night, having it rain, having random people run around and me yelling for my girlfriend to come look because I was like, those are people. This is insane. There's weather. It was daytime. Now it's nighttime. It's raining on me. Holy shit, this is the best thing I've ever played. And then Black Burrow was a mind blower. Um, sheer panic of losing my corpse in Black Burrow. Um, consenting someone and asking, you're not going to steal my stuff, are you? Um, and then uh, the run to Freeport epic. And so that's part of also why we want to like, that's part of why we want to make the game that we... It, sorry, that's why we want to make... The, we're taking the approach that we're taking in order to make the game. It's late. What can I say? But we want to make sure that the world feels fucking big. You know, like... We could... We could jam it all together a little bit more and skimp out on some zones and, you know... Smash the regions together more or whatever. But we really want, I mean, you've run through, it, well, if you've run through um, just this desert region of Xur, and when we get in here, like, we really want it to feel epic again. Um, so, yeah, we'll see, but... Shotark said, ain't those one of the security questions for password recovery in Eminem? What was your first character in EverQuest? Oh, shit. See, I told you. Super easy to hack. Uh, but yeah, Defiant Possum, I think streams are, um, I think streams are, are just going to be an ongoing thing. It'll, it'll be funny, like, we go live and the streams are just people coming in here with customer service complaints. People come in here and complain about like changes to their class. I'm gonna be like, I just have a, I'll just have a button that I just keep pushing. It's like, go tell Nick, go tell Nick, go tell Nick. 
Oh wait, no, Ollie did that. Go tell Ollie. Uh, Eminem streams are like waiting for new Seinfelds in the 90s, much anticipated. Yeah, I'm sorry that I'm so bad about uploading my uh, videos to YouTube as well. I think we're, 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 we all gotta increase our game on that one. Any plans on a guck like Dungeon Maze? Definitely. Um, Ali said Worm's Vein's kind of like that already. So said the first time you fall down, the befallen well. If for me, I got to befallen so much later in my career that there was less risk there. I, I just fell through the whatever it was, the stump or whatever in Blackboro into the pit. Where do trolls and lizards fit in? Sorry if I missed that. They fit in later. Losing your level 17 Wood Elf Ranger to a Cyclops in the Ocean of Tears, his body gone forever. Oh man, that's tough. Oh, goodness, guys. Who is designing the classes in this game? Nick is the primary on that. Um, but like most things, the team chips in all over the place on stuff. We've all got opinions. Uh, but if you go back and watch a class video, we've got a video up. That's a class video. And... Uh, that unfamiliar voice that you hear in there is Nick. We're going to get him streaming again. Ooh. All right. I'm going to check, make sure I'm not missing anything crazy here. What's this activity in Slack? Cool, cool. I'm gonna check a Discord. Cool, bunch of cat pictures. I'll figure out what the what that's about later. Valkron said, robot, weird comment, not to be offensive. Every time you guys say not to be offensive, you ultimately aren't offensive. So, but I appreciate it. But when I first saw the announcement of this game, I thought it was a joke and I didn't take it seriously. But you streaming and showing me the game kind of changed my mind. Well, I'm glad we've kind of changed your mind, Valkron. You keep showing up, we'll eventually get you fully changed. No, I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, uh, all we can do is all we can do is show you what we're doing. Clearly, you can't. I'm, I'm barely functioning here, so I'm obviously not bullshitting you. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're just gonna always inundate you with info, have our streams and all that stuff going on. Um, do our best to not bullshit you and let you decide whether or not you think the game is worth your time and like I said we found more and more ways to uh, to present info and um, then you'll see it and if we get closer and closer to 2026 and it's not happening then you'll be the first to know do I work on this game 12 hours plus a day um, no I mean, some days I, I mean, I sat down, I got up at 5.30 this morning uh, because of time zone difference, but this was a rare morning, so this is not typical of my days, but 
Goblin was wrapping up. He was doing a lot of this, uh, basically redoing slides that we had to look prettier. And I wanted to make sure he had all the feedback that he needed. So went to bed yesterday. I think I probably hopped out of here at like 10, 10, 30, 11. And then woke up this morning when Jasmine's alarm went off at 5.30 and just woke up and immediately like checked in on Sack was like. Oh, yeah, she wanted to snooze a little bit longer, but I was like on my phone and I saw there was a huddle going on and I was like, hey guys, I'm not able to talk yet, but I'll be able to listen in. And they were, and it was like Nicodemus and Goblin were like, dude, go back to bed. We're done. I was like, shit. Okay. Uh. <laughs> I'm up now. So yeah, I mean, there are days where it's, you know, there are days where it's a few hours or like tomorrow, I'll probably take a, a, take the full day off, but that'll mean a few hours here and there or working on fun stuff. Uh, there's so much stuff that needs to get done that sometimes it's nice just to take some time off and screw around with some lore or whatever. Um, but then there are some days where, you know, some of us will work eight hours, 10 hours, 12 hours longer. Yeah, today's a long day now that you mention it because it's midnight. Um, so been up for like, what? Almost 19 hours, but yeah. But I mean, there's, dude, I, you know, I walk the dog, I have meals, I go grocery shopping. I got a haircut today. It's not like I'm just sitting here the whole time. I am in uh, Germany. He can count how many hours he works on Eminem on one hand. Well, one of his hands anyway. That's so funny. You definitely don't want to get burned out. Oh, don't worry. There's there's definitely pacing going on. We uh we manage it. <laughs> we manage it well. And and you'll see like different folks on the team uh they'll be knocking some stuff out for a while and then they'll They've got vacations or they've got work stuff or real life stuff or whatever. And, and they take a few weeks or a month or something. And, but folks, folks on the team have been pretty freaking consistent. Um, Ali said today was a 12 plus hour day for me and Eminem dev, but it's not typically like that for him either. Don't let him lie. Ali puts in ridiculous amount of time as well. But then again, Ali broke something and then had to spend four hours finding the thing that he broke. So that was at least a, that was at least a third of his twelve-hour day. Um, out of interest, do you keep tabs on how Pantheon's doing? Yeah, I was listening to the Q and A, uh, most recent Q and A earlier today. Yeah, I mentioned before, I know Joppa. Um, we've been talking throughout this process. I met him when we first started this game. Uh, some people introduced us and then we started talking. So. Yeah, keep up on that. Um, keep up on that. And then I've got like certain content creators that I follow um, who you know, do a lot of games and I'll usually, uh, just use them to try to like keep tabs on different games. Um, but honestly, there's a lot of times, like there's, there's so much stuff that I'd like to play or other stuff I'd like to read or get done or whatever. But I just here lately, it feels like there's always something that needs to get done on Eminem. Um, so Did you guys brawl over which game is better? Give the audience what we want. What? When Chris and I speak? Dude, he's so nice. He's such a complimentary dude. He's such a nice guy. He's even he's even nicer behind the scenes than he seems when he's doing Q&As and stuff, so. Valkron said, Clover's on Pantheon. Didn't realize that. When did that happen? 
that's been a while now. At least last year. Uh, he did a really good interview with somebody. Um, I think if you go to a Loving Robot YouTube, if you go to like the little community banner things or whatever, I'm, I thought I had posted something about Clover because I had just listened to the interview. If that link's there, then that's a good interview. Has the same song been looping for two hours? If so, that's impressive staying power. Yep, it has been. It's the new one. Um, Robert just made this for Veil of Zentar. What made you go from California to Germany? I went from California to Texas to Germany, to Sweden to Germany. I get around. Oh, cool. Okay. So with, with Meister linked the stream in chat with uh, Steve Clover. That's another guy that's really, really, uh, really, really nice dude. I think I, I, I do recommend that people watch that interview with him. If you're interested in early EverQuest um, information, that's a good one. Is the launch party at the Harry Pig in Gamlestan? If, if so, I'm there. Jasmine's there as well. I, um, I have a, uh, like, I have a kind of a cool but also sad story about the hairy pig in Gamlestan. Um, I liked them so much. We, I didn't discover them until right before, uh, right before we left Sweden. And, uh, and I had an opportunity to speak with uh, both of the owners on two different sessions and they're such great people. And so we actually became their first international shift order of meat. And they had it all like, they had it all like um, super well packed and dry ice and everything and sent it and it would have been perfect timing and we would have gotten it and it would have been wonderful except we did not calculate there being a series of bank holidays when they sent it. Christmas yeah, like, so basically the shipping got fucked up on it and it stayed in the post office too long. And so then when it arrived, it was just like a giant box full of just, it was packed, so it wasn't gross or anything, but it was just like the meat was rotten. It was done. Um, oops. And they were so nice. Like I told them that uh, that it happened. They're like, "Oh no!" And then they didn't didn't charge us. I was like, "It's not your fault. You could charge. You could charge for it." Like I would have expected that you did. So anyway, um, so naturally, when we went back to Sweden, we uh, we went back to Sweden just for like a weekend weekend vacation there, just so we could go eat. Salacia said, this isn't in my interest, but I think you guys should continue to build hype with very limited playtests before EA. Don't want people to burn through content before launch. Yeah, don't worry. We are definitely keeping that in mind. So, um, and we may find that we limit playtests in ways that make them limited. Even if the frequency is uh, a little bit higher or whatever. So we could restrict certain things or get people to focus on certain stuff. What is the level cap going to be? Uh, level 50. Y'all need to read this FAQ. We wrote it up for you. Level 50. Where does it say it? Right here. Another ice storm's coming to your apartment? Man, that's no good. You guys gotta... You guys get up. Get some spring in your life. Ollie said, I missed that. What did you say? What part? 
Is it 2 a.m. where you're at, Ollie? Level cap part. Level 50. Uh, does each race have its own city? Kegkiller187 um, asked, does each race have its own city? It does, but each race will not have its own city at the beginning of early access. That's part of what early access is for, is to get them their own cities. But each race does have its own city. Um, and the, um, the region sort of around the cities will also a lot of times have a pretty, pretty unique vibe. And some of those regions are above ground and some of them are below. So we, we, um, we'll be exposing more of the map as we go. And then there will be a, this is the surface map. Um, then there will also be a deep map that is, uh, we've got the underground mapped out as well. So. And of course there's more here. It's just, this image doesn't show all of it. All right, guys, it's midnight. You're probably tired of me like and just yawning into your ear and shit. So, tell you what, this was exciting. Mainly just wanted to hop on here and see if there was any immediate reaction to the um, to the early access announcement. I'm sure there'll be a lot more questions and stuff in Discord. I'm sure there'll be comments on other forums and stuff as well. Bring them to us. Um, and yeah and next week i probably won't stream we'll see i have shoulder surgery on tuesday so i definitely won't be streaming on wednesday um we'll see how friday is um rimrock yeah basically um and then i will probably be back the following week um but with that in mind, so everybody be cool for the next few weeks, next week at least. Um, I will see you in Discord. If I'm feeling up to it, I'll stream again. Um, the, the guys will be on Discord as usual and um, answering your questions. Anything that we find missing here will get added. Um, yeah. So I'm glad you guys are amped on it. Uh, the people in here at least have seemed pretty amped on it. So that's nice. Um, if anybody's lurking and like, uh, I am displeased. Well, you should have said something. Um, you had your chance. Talet, you're welcome for the stream. Possum's immediate reaction is, looks fantastic. That's cool. Zeitgeist said, hope your surgery goes well. Thank you, buddy. Um, you guys have, for those of you that are into it, have a wonderful Good Friday. Hopefully you guys have a uh, opportunity again, if it's your thing, to have a uh, have a good holiday the next next couple of days, few days. Um, Did you ever play through any injuries while playing EQ? Nope, I have actually been a pretty injury-free person up until last year. 
Olo, have a great one. Dozakar, you're welcome for the stream. You're welcome for the updates. I know I wish you guys could play right now as well. Spring Pro said thank you. Thank you uh, to all the team. Great work. Everything is great. Appreciate it. Glad Isan could sneak in here. I'm glad he got in here as well. Dadvik, you're very welcome. John, see ya. MMO Pug, take care. Yeah, D, I'm sure we'll talk soon. And thank you very much. Whiffmeister. You're welcome and thank you. Dragon, you're welcome. Is Nova, goodbye. Darius, later. Good night, Ali. Get some sleep, dude. It's late. Isan, my dear friend, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Justin Beard, I'm glad you're able to come in here. Like I said at the beginning of the stream, you're the number one person I wanted to make sure was in here tonight because I knew you were waiting on Friday and I'm not going to be here tomorrow. So I'm glad you made it in here, buddy. Yeah, happy Easter weekend. I'm glad you said it, Possum. Thank you. I was, <laughs> I was thinking of Good Friday and I was just completely forgetting about the whole rest of Easter. I'm like... What are the words again that, that define this holiday that's coming up? Shit. Yeah, so we're excited about Easter. It's going to be good. Later, Pessimistic Squid. Zinfar, take care. Good to see you, Brown Butcher. Glad you made it in here. This holiday is always my birthday, but now also my daughter's birthday. Oh, man. Happy birthdays to both of you. <laughs> Move over Easter. It's pudding time. Like I said, what you do in the privacy of your own house. How dare you say that, Brown Butcher. All right. Now you guys are just being silly. I am going to... Uh, I'm going to wrap up and then I'm going to go to bed. Because it's late. Everybody, have a very happy Easter. Have a great week, week next week if I don't see you before then. And uh, yeah, share the good news. And let us know if you find any typos on the website, have any questions that we haven't answered or anything like that. And I will see you, I guess I'll see you when I see you. And I'll, I'll try to get these VODs up, try to get these VODs up um, ASAP so that they're available to everybody. Dozakar, happy Easter. Cool, man. All right, guys. Thanks for a very fun night and I will see you in a week or so. Bye bye. I'll give it a second before I push the button. All right. I'm going to push the button now. Happy Easter. See you. Goodbye.